Stream Bible Study of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. Thank you for tuning in this evening as we come together every Wednesday evening uh, to pray and to praise and to study the word of the Lord. It is the Apostle Peter that tells us that we are to grow not only in the grace of God, but we are to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as good disciples, we come to learn of the Lord. And so our worship this evening is going to start with this song. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know what? Sing it with us. I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I said yes when they said unto me. I said yes when they said unto me. I said yes when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I got happy when they said unto me. I got happy when they said unto me. I got happy when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go, let us go, let us go. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes, we were glad. Shall we pray? Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come into the house this evening. And as David said, we were glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. We come into the courts of the Lord. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. Enter the courts with praise. We are thankful unto you. We bless your name because you are good. You're good all the time and all the time you are good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. We thank you, Father because you have daily loaded us with benefits. Great is thy faithfulness. You have been a faithful God to us. Thank you for your word that says you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us, but that you will be with us always, even until the end of the world. And we bless your name. There's no God like you. There is no God beside you. You are God alone, and we bless you and extol your name and praise you for the great God that you are. We worship you for your mighty acts and your excellent greatness. We thank you because your name is holy, Lord, and we give you the glory and the honor. We thank you for your son, Jesus, how he came, bled and died, suffered in our stead, cleansed us from our sin and gave us an opportunity to come into the family of God. We thank you, Father, that of all the billions of people in the world, you allowed us to have the knowledge of the truth. You said that we would know the truth and that the truth would make us free. Thank you for freedom in the truth, Lord. We thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank you for the liberty that comes in your name. 
for the glory that you reveal in this place. We pray, oh God, now that you would have your way this evening in every heart, in every mind, in every spirit. Let the Spirit of God sit on each of us as on the day of Pentecost with cloven tongues of fire. Have your own way in each of us and let your will be done, Lord. We look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We dare not end this prayer this evening, Lord, without remember the people of the Gaza Strip. Stretch out your hand. Let mercy prevail. Father, let mercy prevail. Let mercy prevail in that land. Look on the people of Ukraine and not just those two nations, but every war-torn nation that is experiencing violence at this time. Look on the United States of America. Oh, God, you said a house divided against itself cannot stand. So bring unity to this place so that your name would be glorified. Now, God, as we come into this place this evening to hear your word, let Rhema be found in this place and let everyone grow thereby. And we do love you and we thank you and we give your name praise in Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, thank God. Come on, clap your hands and thank God in here. Come on, you're not clapping your hand. Clap your hands and thank God. How many know the Lord is good? Yes, the Lord is good. Isn't the Lord good? The Lord is good. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him when the sun goes down. Let's sing a little bit of that. Help me, Kyra. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. You ought to praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him when the sun goes down. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down, his name is Jesus, Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down, because he's worthy, because he's worthy, worthy, worthy in the morning, worthy in the noonday, worthy. Worthy, worthy when the sun goes down. Let's praise him. You are the praise him, praise him, yeah. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noonday. Praise him, praise him, praise him when the sun goes. Come on, put your hands on him. We ought to praise him, praise him, oh, praise him in the morning, praise him in the noonday, praise him, praise him, praise him when the sun goes down. You ought to love him, love him, love him in the morning. Love him in the noonday. Love him. Love him. Love him when the sun goes. One more time. Praise him. One more time. You ought to praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, yeah. Praise him when the sun goes down. Oh yeah. Praise him 
when the sun goes down. Oh yeah, praise him when the sun goes down. Praise him when the sun goes down. Hey. hey! Come on, put your hand on. Oh, oh yeah. Praise him. 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 You all to praise him. Praise him. You all to praise him. Praise him. You all to praise him. Praise him. Put your hands on it. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Jesus, hey, Jesus, Jesus, no other name, name under heaven can save us. Jesus, 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 when the sun goes down, Jesus, 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 no other, no other name under. Heaven can save us, but Jesus, oh yeah, Jesus, oh yeah, oh yeah, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down, oh yeah, Jesus when the sun goes down, oh yeah, Jesus when the sun goes down, Jesus when the sun goes down. How many know we praise his name? Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, and Jesus when the sun goes down. Thank you, Mother Kyra. Amen. At this time, our service calls for our announcements. Would you all receive Sister Natasha Hilliard with a hearty amen? Good evening, everyone. We would like to welcome everyone to Abundant Love Church Wednesday night Bible study. We certainly thank you for tuning in this evening by way of uh, live stream. Please feel, feel free to post any questions, comments, or any special prayer requests that you may have. This week, we will continue to explore through the, first, uh, the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to explore through chapter 14 this evening. And to receive an outline for this Bible study, you can comment below with your email address. You can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com, or you can go to our website, AbundantLove-Church.org. We are on the third day of our 21-day consecration. We have sent out outlines uh, via email with weekly instructions for this particular fast. And if you are not on our email list and you would like to consecrate with us, please comment again below with your email address or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com. We will have prayer nightly during this 21-day consecration. So our in-house prayer will take place on Mondays at 6.30, Wednesdays at 6 p.m., and Sunday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Our prayer held uh, via Zoom will be at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Each evening, our bishop will uh, culminate with uh, a vision of casting for the vision of 2024. All members are encouraged to attend in person and or via Zoom meetings. Leaders, please see uh, Sister Monique after service for any availability to participate in the uh, Sunday intercessory prayer as well as the Zoom sessions. We would like to thank all of our faithful givers to, uh, who give to our ministry. If you have the opportunity and you have not had the opportunity to give to Abundant Love, you can give through our cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. 
or you can give mobily through GiveLify, Abundant Love Church here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We certainly welcome you to join us in our regular worship services. Our address is 2615 New Haven Avenue. And on Sundays, we have Sunday School Panel at 9 a.m., followed by Sunday School here in the sanctuary at 9.50 a.m., and then, of course, our money morning worship at 10.45 a.m. On Mondays, we have corporate prayer at 6.30, and on Wednesdays, intercessory prayer, 6 p.m., followed by the Disciples Academy Bible Study at 6.30. If you miss any of the live streams, all of these are archived for you. You can find those on our YouTube channel, capital A, capital L Ministries, or of course on our Facebook page, Abundant Love Church. These are all of our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that hath breath do what? Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his goodness and his mercy for just keeping us another day? We owe God praise. Hallelujah. Speaking of a debt to pay, we have a debt of praise. We got to give him the praise. Hallelujah. Because he's been that good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endured to all generations. Hallelujah. There's a song that we haven't sung in some time called All I Need is a Touch from You. Hallelujah. Because I know if he touches me, if he touches the situation that I'm going through, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become correct. Hallelujah. Because just one touch from him. Hallelujah. All I need is a touch. From you, only you can do the things you do. Take the wrong in my life and make it right. All is a touch from you do i have anybody that agrees with that all i need is a touch from you we're gonna sing that again sing it with me all i need is a touch from you Only you can do the things you do. Take the wrong in my life and make it right. All I need is a touch from him, is a touch from you. All I need is a touch from you. Come on, let's sing that one more time. All I need, all I need. Come on and join us. Is a touch from you. Only you, only you can do the thing. Take the wrong in my life Hallelujah And make it right All I Hallelujah Glory to touch Is a touch from you All I need All I need Is a touch Is a touch from you hallelujah and let's sing this together touch me touch me touch me touch me 
Touch me. Touch me. All I need. All I need is a touch. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Hallelujah. Touch me. Touch me. All I need. All I need. One more time. Is a touch. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Hallelujah. Touch me. All I need. All I need is a touch, touch me, touch me, touch me, hallelujah, all I need, all I need is a touch from you. Is a touch from you. Oh, yeah. All I need is a touch. Is a touch from you to make everything right. All I need is a touch from you. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. One touch will make it right. One touch will make it right. Whatever the situation is, one touch from God will make it right. Oh. oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Lift your voice. How many know all you need is a touch? All, all I need Thank you, Jesus. is a Thank touch. You, His touch deliver. His touch sets free and his touch makes whole glory to God how many know the touch of the Lord is all you need amen thank you mother Kyra amen wonderful song bless the Lord in this place amen we're certainly happy uh, to be home it's good to go away but it's good better to come home amen amen church Amen. We're glad to be home. Amen. The Lord met us and kept us safe through the airways. Amen. And I'm not even going to complain about the snow that you all, I left two or three days. Y'all couldn't stop the, y'all couldn't keep that snow away while I was gone. Amen. All right. All right. So we, we left 60 degree temperatures to come home to this, but uh, we are grateful. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all things because this is the will of God. Can we be real? Sometimes it gets difficult to give God thanks. But we thank him anyway because he's always good even if our circumstances aren't. The good thing about trouble, trouble doesn't last always. Amen. We go into trouble and then we get out of trouble. And that's a good thing. So anything that you are experiencing, just know that it's not going to last always. Amen. All right. God bless you. We've been surveying here through the New Testament. Amen. It's been such a fruitful study. Amen. Uh, and I have I have found out that we have listeners into our Bible study in quite a few places. Amen. And we uh, even met some people uh, that said how much they enjoy uh, the Bible study. How many know that Bible study is necessary to grow? And we are commanded to grow. And so we need a healthy appetite when it comes to the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. For those of you that are uh, consecrating with us, um, it's something that we do every January, but by no means have we made it routine. Uh, it's just our way to stop some of the distractions and to move closer to the Lord. And we have the promise and the guarantee that if we move closer to God, he will move closer to us. Let me see your hand if you want to go closer to God. Amen. Amen. So 
Uh, if you would like to consecrate with us, you can send your email address to our email address, and we'll send you a copy of the dietary restrictions. And we added something. Uh, we added something this year that we haven't added uh, in years past. Uh, as a little addendum to them, we have challenged the saints to reduce their screen time per week. So we just gave it a percentage. Uh, only you know how much you use screen time. By screen time, I mean that your computer or your phone or your television, anything that has a uh, digital screen to it, uh, just the challenge to reduce your screen time. Pastor, I don't know how much I'm on my phone. Well, actually, they'll give you statistics to let you know how much you've been on the phone. And so you look and see what that weekly average is, and then you work to reduce that weekly average. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Everybody just laughing, but ain't nobody saying nothing. Amen. All right. Um, <laughs> if you want to know how attached you are to your phone, leave home, uh, and then remember you don't have it. Whatever type of sensation you get, that'll let you know how attached you are to it. But how many know we're not supposed to be attached to anything more than God? So how do you feel when you leave home and you haven't prayed? So how do you feel when you leave home and you haven't read your scripture? Amen. All right. So we all have room to grow. Amen. Amen. All right. Incidentally, Sister Drew is not able to be with us this evening, uh, but Sister Monique is going to assist us as we go uh, into chapter number 14. And the objectives of chapter number 14 of 1 Corinthians is to help us understand the proper use of the gift of speaking in tongue, and it is to help us to understand the principles which govern the order of the church assembly. How many know that you got to have order? Any place you don't have order, you get chaos. And so it's not, uh, certainly don't want the church to be a place of chaos. And so what uh, Paul will address here, he will, he will address rather the proper use of the gift of tongues and not just tongues, the proper use of any particular gift in the church so that the church gets the good of it. Amen. All right, just a couple more. Uh, I want to set this up because to really understand chapter 14, you have to be abreast of chapter 12 and 13. In chapter 12, he introduces nine gifts to us that operate by the Spirit of God. And then we learn from this book and Romans that gifts are given to the church for the body to profit with. And so whatever gift you have of the spirit, it's not necessarily for you. It is for the benefit of the assembly that you worship in. So he enumerates these nine gifts, and then he tells us there's a better way than just operating gift to represent God. And then chapter number 13 goes through this expose of the love of God that we should demonstrate about it being uh, kind and, and long-suffering and things of that nature. And so he says, the better way is love. Now, and if you just stop right there, you will believe that he is saying love as opposed to spiritual gifts. But as we start chapter 14, you will find out that he is not doing that. He is coupling love with the spiritual gifts. Amen? Amen. All right. You ready to read, Sister Monique? Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Follow after charity. Okay. So he says, follow after or pursue love, charity. And desire spiritual gifts. And desire spiritual gifts. So I just said that he's not preferring one to the other. He is saying that we should do both. You should not only pursue love, the type of love uh, that chapter 13 lines out for us as we worship and operate in the body of Christ, but we should also desire gifts. So you can, you can actually couple these together and make your ministry or your representation of Christ more effective. Not just the power of a gift, but the power of the love that you possess. And I, I posed the question uh, um, 
in the motivating moments and I said, it's one thing for your gift to be anointed, anointed to sing, anointed to teach, anointed to do whatever you do. But is your love anointed? Mm -hmm. Are you anointed to love? That same anointing that's on your gift is the anointing that's on your love. And it is that power that if we surrender ourselves and allow God to do it through us, we'll see that anointing. Amen. So he says, don't just pursue love. He says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Read. But rather that you may prophesy. And when it comes to these gifts, rather of all the nine gifts that he mentioned in verse number 12, he said, rather that you prophesy. He said, covet the best gift. And if you want to know what the best gift is now, not best in terms of superior but best in terms of impact on the body. He's not talking about competition. He's talking about using the gift so that it does the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. And he said, rather prophesy than speak in tongues. Read. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Because if you speak with an unknown tongue... You don't address people, you address God. So, if you're addressing God, can I say it like this? Uh, you don't want people eavesdropping on your conversation with God. Amen. So, sometimes God will allow that conversation to be from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when a person is speaking in tongues, they're not addressing individuals, they're addressing God. Read. For no man understandeth him. Because no one understands him. Now, we'll get a little later unless there's somebody to interpret what he is speaking. Read. How bad in the spirit he speak of mysteries. When you speak in tongue or you have the gift of tongues or you pray in tongue, the scripture says here that you're speaking mysteries to God. Okay. Uh, I believe this is where uh, the Bible tells us that we know not how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit of God will make intercession for us with groanings that can't be uttered. I believe that praying in tongue and speaking in tongue is one of those avenues where the Spirit of God makes intercession for us in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so he's speaking to God and he's speaking mysteries. Remember, a mystery is a truth that is yet to be revealed. It's not hidden forever, but a mystery is something that God has hidden in the scriptures to provoke us to search it out and to gain that truth. Read. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. Okay, here's the difference. So a person that's speaking in tongue is only speaking to God. But a person that prophesies, the, the, the reason Paul said the person that prophesies is more uh, uh, superior, he said, because a person that prophesies is going to speak to edification, that is building people up, read. And exhortation. Exhortation, which is kind of the rah-rah cheerleader, come on, we can do this and get it done, read. And comfort. And comfort. So a prophetic person. Or a person with the gift of prophecy that is not a personal, individual, keep it to myself gift. But when this gift is exercised, people are edified, they're built up in the faith, people are exhorted to do greater works in God. And if they are experiencing any kind of trauma, any kind of grief, any kind of distress, people with a prophetic gift have the ability to comfort people that are going through tough times. Amen. So that's why he said, I'd rather that you prophesy. Because if you speak in tongue, you're just edifying yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you prophesy, then not just you get the good of it, the people in the congregation get the good. Are you with me? Amen. Okay, let me say one more time. The gift that you have, everybody in here has a gift. You have at least one. But your gift in your possession to operate and perfect is not just to edify you, but it says that the body or the people of God is supposed to profit with the gift that you have. So two things we need to keep in mind. We have to keep in mind that the gift is not for us. And we have to keep in mind that we have to render our gift in a place where people can get the good of it. 
Now, that's going to knock out these people that keep trying to worship through the stream. I'm not against the stream. The stream is a good tool when you need it. But it is hard for the congregation to get the good of your gift through the stream. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, read. He that speaks in an unknown tongue he, edifies himself. He that speaks in an unknown tongue is all about him and God. Mm -hmm. Read. But he that prophesies But he that prophesies edifies the assembly, edifies the church. Read. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied for greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with, un, with tongues. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. Let me start over. I would that ye all speak it, speak. It's speak my with desire that instead of speaking in tongues, that you all would prophesy is what he's saying. Read. But rather that ye prophesy, for greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues. Paul said, if I had my choice for which one you should do, I would rather that you prophesy because prophecy is greater, more beneficial. Look at that. Greater is more beneficial than people who just speak in tongues. Read. Except he interprets. The only way that the church is going to profit from somebody speaking in tongue is if somebody interprets what is being spoken. If somebody is speaking in tongue and there's no interpreter, the only person that's going to benefit is that person speaking in tongue. Let me kind of say it like this. Uh, the Bible talks about other tongues, unknown tongues, and diverse tongues. On the day of Pentecost, they spoke with other tongues. That is, they spoke the native language of other countries that were represented at the feast at that particular day. So per se, when I was coming through school, they only offered about three or four foreign language classes. Mm -hmm. They offered French, they offered German, uh, they offered Spanish, can't remember the fourth one. Anyway, if someone speaks French and no one has learned French mm -hmm. and no one speaks French, mm -hmm. then speaking French will not benefit anybody that hears it. Amen. The only way someone speaking French will benefit you is if there is an interpreter. You all remember back in the 80s and 90s over in those crusades in foreign countries that have the preacher preaching, then they'd have an interpreter, interpreter yes. right next to them. Yes. And one of the things I loved about the interpreter, because the interpreter had to match the power and the same zeal. So if the preacher said, Jesus saves, the interpreter said, say, Jesus saves. <laughs> okay. Yes. So because they want to communicate for understanding. Without understanding, it's not fruitful. Amen. You never benefit from anything you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's why wisdom is principle. Therefore, get it. But with all thy getting, get understanding. get understanding. So it's necessary for you to understand. So if somebody has the gift of speaking in tongue, and you're speaking in tongue in the congregation, and nobody's there to interpret what you're speaking, we don't benefit. Amen. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right, read. That the church may receive edifying. But if there's an interpreter, the church can receive benefit edifying. and edification. Read. Now, brethren. Now, brethren and sister in and in. If I come unto you speaking with tongues. He's going to give you an example now. If what, I come to you speaking in tongues. What shall I profit you? What am I going to profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by Except I speak knowledge. something to you that's going to reveal something to you or make something known to you or give you knowledge that you haven't had heretofore. I can only benefit you as, as speaking to you. And every time someone speaks to you, they ought to do, I mean, more than two, but two things for sure. Either they ought to enlighten you to something that you didn't know, that's called revelation, or they are to inform you of something more perfectly that you do know. That's instruction. That's learning. Amen? 
So that's how people benefit from the speaking gift. Either it makes something known to us or it enriches something that we already know. It gives us knowledge. Okay? Mm -hmm. But Paul says, if I come speaking in a tongue, uh, for you to benefit, you have to have something revealed to you or you got to have some knowledge. Read. Or by prophesying or by doctrine. Okay, so by prophecy or by doctrine or teaching, if you understand it, you'll benefit from it. Read. Or even things without life giving sound. Because he's trying to prove the point that you have to understand to be benefited. He's, so he said, if I come to you speaking, you won't benefit except I reveal something to you or give you some knowledge. Because even things that don't have life, that are designed to communicate something to you, will not profit you if they don't make a definite sound. Read the rest of that verse and whether, I'll give you an example. Okay. Whether pipe or harp. Whether except, a pipe or harp. Except they give a distinction A pipe in or harp is an instrument. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And unless they give you the certain sound, you'll miss the understanding. Now, let me, let me give you a little insight to this. And this is where watching Westerns uh, help you. <laughs> Amen. Okay. In the Westerns that we watch, they, they have a cavalry. And every cavalry has a bugler. Yeah. And there are certain things that he'll bugle that let you know it's time to get up or it's time to charge. That means get up, get attention, call in. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. That's, that's a bad interpretation. But it's charge. Uh -huh. Okay. But what happens if that bugler plays the wrong song? What if he plays fall in when it's time to charge? Yes. He'll communicate the wrong thing. Or worse than that, if he was tipping the night before, uh -oh. he trying to blow the right, you know, the right thing, but he blows the wrong thing. Uh -oh. And then people are confused. They're confused because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like uh, the, the guy that taught me piano... Um, he, he, he going on now, but he was hard. He was hard on me. I was trying to learn how to play quickly, and he wasn't having it. And he said, the melody has to play in the song, or you don't recognize the song. And I would be practicing in my lesson, and I think, I thought he wasn't even paying attention to me. He'd be talking to somebody else. And if I took the top note off of that chord and kept playing, he said, no. He said, play that melody. Because the song is only recognized by the melody. Mm -hmm. That's what gives you understanding. A song without a melody is unrecognizable. And so what he is establishing, he's establishing for the people to get good out of it, there has to be a point of understanding. Whether it's a harp, whether it's a flute, whether it's a trumpet, whether it's a bugle, it has to be a definite, understood thing so that people respond. It's the same way with speech. You can only respond to speech that you understand. Mm -hmm. Read. How shall it be known what is piped or harp? If they're piping something with no melody, how are you going to know what they're playing? Read. For if the trumpet give an uncertain if sound. If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, if he, play, if he plays a battle, note that he's not supposed to play, read. Who shall prepare himself to the battle? If, if he's supposed to play reveille and he doesn't play it, who's going to know it's time to prepare for battle? Nobody will. Because it's misunderstood. It's called miscommunication. Anytime somebody's trying to communicate something and what's being communicated isn't received, whether by sender or receiver, it is called miscommunication. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we get miscommunication talking our text. Talking text was supposed to make your life easier. <laughs> you got to proofread your text now. Yes, sir. Or you will send something. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that you did. <laughs> that you. <laughs> I think I, I think I told you all this. The first time I used a talking text, I sent it to my son, and I said, "Hey, you," or and and that's not what it said. It said, "Hell, you." <laughs> I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> so now I have to proofread all my text so yeah. that I don't miscommunicate. Read. So likewise ye. So likewise. So just like it is with the trumpet and the harp, except the same ye, thing for you. Except ye utter by the tongue words except easy to understand. Except you speak with words that are easy to understand. I'm going to pause right here because sometimes teachers and preachers have a tendency to speak over their audience, trying to impress people with big well, words well, well, and well. intelligence. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are oohing and eyeing and not understanding what's being said. Amen. Paul said, not with excellency of speech or man's wisdom, he said, but by demonstration of spirit and power so that your confidence and faith only stands in God and not in the wisdom of men. Are you with me? Amen. All right, read that again. Listen at this. So likewise ye. So likewise you all. Except you utter by the Likewise you all that want to inspire and help and benefit the congregation likewise you all that want to help and be effective and be beneficial to the congregation read except you utter by the tongue words except easy to you be speak with words that are easy to understand. understand yes read how shall it be known what is spoken how will they know Unless you speak plainly so they can understand. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. For ye shall speak into the air. Because if you don't speak with words that are easy to understand, it's like just talking into the air. Mm -hmm. What good is if you're talking to somebody and they don't understand what you're saying? None. No good at all. Come on, come on. I used to be a good lip reader. I'm bad at it now. Mm-hmm. People be saying, and I be going, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <amen>. What? <laughs> Finally, I just get up and go over to them. <laughs> okay, all right. So, 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 if you're speaking and they don't understand, then you're just like one talking to the air is what it means. Mm -hmm. Read. There are, it may be, so that so many kinds of voices in the world, okay. and none of them is without signification. Okay. This is Paul's way of saying that in the world, there are so many different languages. Mm -hmm. okay, and we know that. Mm -hmm. okay, there, are so many different there are so many different languages that we don't even know. Mm -hmm. When you go into Africa, they have different dialects yes. of the same language. You know, I, I, took a, I took a Spanish class, and I only took about three weeks of it. Mm -hmm. and, and because... Um, um, they were asking questions and said, well, how do you say this? Mm -hmm. And the teacher would say, well, if you're in this part, you say it like this. But if in you're in this part, you say it like, because there's so many different dialects of the same language. And this is Paul's way of saying there are so many different languages, there are so many different dialects, but every language has significance where it's spoken. The language has significance if people understand the language. So he's pounding home, he's pounding home that people have to understand to get the good of it, which is the problem with speaking in tongues. Now, there's no harm in you speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues all you want at home. It's just in the church where it's going to cause problems. Don't, don't take my word for it. Keep reading. Therefore, Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, if I don't know the language, I shall be unto him that speaketh a, bar a barbarian. Be, I'll be a barbarian. That, the better term is foreigner. When you go to a foreign country and they, and they speak a native language and you don't speak the language, uh, they're not out of order. You are. Mm -hmm. You're the foreigner. The foreigner is the person who's introduced into something that's normal and they're not accustomed to it. 
So he's saying there's so many different languages, and the language is good as long as there is understanding. But if you come into a setting where people are speaking a language and the language is foreign to you, you can't be benefited. Read. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto you. You'll be a barbarian to him, and he'll be a barbarian to you. Read. Even so ye. Even so. For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts. For as, now here, now let's, now he's going back to the original, the original. The first thing he addressed in chapter number 12 is the competition and the stress that was between the gifts. And if you can kind of read into this, that speaking in tongue was the gift that everybody thought had most power. Mm -hmm. And if you go into some Pentecostal churches, it's still like that. Yes. You ain't got, you, you, you ain't got it unless you speak in tongue. Well, the Bible don't say that. No. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible is one of the, speaking in tongue is one of the signs, mm -hmm. but that's not the proof that you have the Holy Ghost that you speak in a tongue. Change of life That's is the it. proof That's of the it. presence of God. Amen. Because you can speak in some kind of tongue and live in any kind of way. That's right. Amen. So, 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 but in the Corinthian church, speaking in tongue was high on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And because so many people were speaking in tongue, and everybody had a vision, and everybody had a tongue, and everybody had a revelation, they had confusion in the church setting. Now, mm -hmm. don't, don't forget the church setting, and we're talking about order that stops confusion. Mm -hmm. Because there's a passage when we get down in this chapter, uh, I don't claim to be the authority on every passage of scripture. Peter said that some passages are very, very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. But I believe one of the things that will help you to understand is knowing the context of what's going on. So we are speaking from the context of keeping confusion down in the church. 12, 13, and 14 is talking about operating the gifts in such a way that we don't break order and we keep harmony in the worship setting. Okay? Amen. Tongues can be disruptive in a worship setting. Amen. Okay. All right? So read. Seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Okay. I know all of you are seeking gifts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, he just said, covet the, the best gifts earnestly. So follow love and desire spiritual gifts. There's no harm in desiring a spiritual gift. But desire the kind of gifts that are going to do the most good for the most people is what he's saying. Don't desire a gift that's just going to be for you, your four, and no more. Have mercy. Desire the kind of gift that's going to appeal to a wide range of people. Are you all with me? Amen. Okay. So don't make a cookie, make a sheet cake. Amen. That kind of makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. What's your gift? Make a sheet cake. Look at somebody say, make a sheet cake. Make a sheet cake. <laughs> okay. That means it will serve more. Mm -hmm. so, so Paul says to them, desire spiritual gifts, but don't desire the ones that are going to benefit and edify the body. Read. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray so, that he may interpret. So, he's not saying don't speak in tongue. Are y'all ready for this? Because mm -hmm. we run over verses like this. He's not saying don't speak in tongue. He said, if you speak in tongue, pray that you can interpret your own tongue. Amen. Mm -hmm. I always heard somebody else had to interpret your tongue. That's not what Paul said. Mm -hmm. Paul said you can interpret your own tongue mm -hmm. through the Spirit of God. So, so if you're going to speak in tongue, also pray that you interpret. Amen. Because it will even be good for you to know what you're saying. Amen. Read. For if I pray in an unknown tongue. Because if I pray, now, now watch, I'm not talking about at home, next to your bed and nobody in the room with you. I'm talking about in the congregation. Mm -hmm. If you pray in an unknown tongue, read. My spirit prayeth. Your spirit is praying. Read. But my understanding is unfruitful. But even you don't understand what you're praying yes. if you don't have the gift of interpretation. Amen. Okay. So, 
So, so, basically, even though you're speaking mysteries to God, it's unfruitful because there's no understanding. Amen. Ever been reading a book? You read the whole page and then got down to the bottom of the page and realized you didn't comprehend anything mm -hmm. that you just read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whether you were sleepy or whether, you know, whether sometimes your mind will wander. Is it only me? No. When I get down on my knees, everything want to come to your mind. Mm -hmm. And you got to say, oh, no, 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 I'm praying now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so that's, that's the implication he's giving is when a person prays in tongue without interpretation, it's not even fruitful to them from an understanding perspective. Read. What is it then? What then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I need to pray not only with the spirit, I need to pray so that I understand. It only benefits me if I understand. Read. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. This is what I pound our music department with every Thursday. Diction for understanding. Because sometimes we just got a good beat going, ah, bah, bah, yeah, bah, 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 and can't nobody understand what you're saying. <laughs> okay. If they can't understand what you're saying, it's not fruitful. Amen. Back in the day when we was learning uh, music, we didn't have the internet. So you couldn't go on there and get the lyrics. You had to have a tape or, <clears throat> I might date myself here, an LP or a 45, mm -hmm. and you'd have to play it over and over trying to get the right words. And sometimes the diction was so bad on that recording, we made up words okay. that sounded like the words, but nobody knew if they were the right words. That's why you can go into churches now and sing certain songs, and depending on the song you sing, you'll get a different line. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, so understanding is vital. The addiction and comprehension is vital for understanding. If you pray and people can't hear you, if you pray and people can't hear you, mm -hmm. if you pray and people can't hear you, Amen. they don't get the benefit of it. Amen. If you sing and they don't understand you, they don't get the benefit. So I'm going to pray with the Spirit. I'm going to sing with the Spirit and with understanding. Read. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit. Or, el shalt... or else if you don't, how can people say amen to you if they didn't hear what you said? Mm -hmm. now, now, two things we need to learn from this. Number one, you should say amen when it's the truth and you understand. Amen. And you should not say amen to anything you don't understand. Well. Read it again. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit. Or else when you should bless with the Spirit. How shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at the giving of thanks? How are the people going to say amen if they don't understand what you said? Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I seen a little story. Um that somebody was in church and they wasn't paying attention. And the pastor said, if you're willing, raise your hand. She said she raised her hand. And he said, well, we have the first $5,000 contributor. Anybody else? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Understanding is vital. Mm. Amen, somebody. All right, read, read, read. See, he understands not what thou sayest. Okay, he can't say amen if you don't understand what you said. Read. For thou verily givest thanks well. Because you're giving thanks when you speak in tongue, but. But the other is not edified. But the other is not. When you speak in tongue and nobody interprets, mm -hmm. nobody is edified. Got it? Read. I'm, I thank my God. I thank God. I speak with tongues more than you speak. Paul said, I speak in tongue more than all of you all. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I said tongues was the one that was getting all the publicity. Paul is saying, it's not wrong to speak in tongue. In fact, I speak in tongue myself. I speak in tongue more than all of you. That's what Paul said. Read. 
Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with okay. understanding. Let me slow this down. He said, yet in the church, mm -hmm. in the assembly, when you are among the body of Christ and the other members, he said, I would. Now, listen at this comparison. And because if you miss this comparison, you will miss the profit and the benefit of what he's saying. He said, at home, I speak in tongue more than all of you all. Mm -hmm. So I'm not against the people who speak in tongue. And I'm not against people who speak in tongue because I speak in tongue. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. So he says, but in the church, not at home, not by myself, in the church, he said, I would rather, what? Speak Five words with my understanding. I would rather speak five words with my understanding than by, to speak. That by my voice I might teach others also. Uh-huh. Then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. He said, I would rather speak five words that people can understand rather than speak 10,000 words that people can understand. So you see the great disparity mm -hmm. between operating gifts that do good for the body and those that just edify yourself? Amen. All right, read. Brethren. Brethren. Be not children in understanding. Okay. He's pounding home the statement he just made. He said, I'd rather, this is how important understanding to the church is. If, it, if I had 10,000 words, I'd rather speak five that people understood me than 10,000 that people don't understand. Get this. Don't miss this. His, he's driving the point home that it's greater when you edify the church, the body of Christ. He says, so don't be children. Read. Brethren, be not Brethren, children in understanding. Don't be children. Don't be immature on this point. Don't miss this point. How be it in How, malice be ye children. If you got to be a child, be a child in malice. But in understanding, be man. But in understanding, be, be mature. Mm -hmm. What he's driving home is that a gift that doesn't benefit the body is not doing the most good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't miss that. One more time. The verse. A, a gift... A gift that doesn't benefit the body. Now, now, there's only two or three ways your gift can benefit the body. Number one, it has to be a gift from God. It has to be a divine gift. Number two, it must be coupled with love. That's what verse, or rather chapter 13 brought to us. Here now he is saying that it must minister to others. Let me get in a little trouble here. You all with these singing gifts, and you only sing in the shower, and you only sing in your car. Who did y'all hear how quiet that place got just then? <laughs> all right, listen. The, you have the gift, but the gift is not for you. It's only, don't be children in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you haven't placed your gift in a place where it's ministering to the body, you're immature in this area. That's what the book is saying. All right. Read a couple more and let's get out of here. All right. In the law, it is written. Because in the law, it's written. With men of other tongues and prophetic, other lips, Prophetically. Will I speak unto this people? Yeah. Prophetically, God told Israel, because you won't hear me, I'm going to speak to you with people from another tongue. I think, I think the actual verse talks about people with stammering lips. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove. Listen, that's what he did on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Because on the day of Pentecost, when Israel wouldn't hear Jesus, he spoke to all those Gentile nations, and, and, and the Jews got an attitude that the Gentiles got in. So, so in the law, he, he said that I'm going to 
basically speak to you with people from another tongue to provoke you because you won't obey me. Read. And yet for all that will they not hear me. Because you won't hear me. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. I'm going to use people with another tongue from another place because you won't hear what I have to say. Read. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Okay, here it is. Not to them that believe. All right, don't miss this. But to them that believe not. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Tongues are a sign that the Spirit of God and the presence of God is present, but not to believers. Tongues are a sign to unbelievers. Read it again. Wherefore tongues are for Wherefore, a sign. tongues are for a sign. Not to them that believe. Not to people that believe. But to them that believe. Tongues not. are a sign to people that believe not. The proof that God is present in a tongue is to people who don't know God. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. On the day of Pentecost, the people who were amazed were the people who didn't know God. Mm -hmm. Read. But prophesying serves not for them that not believe but, not. But prophesying doesn't serve them that believe not. It serves but for them, them that which believe. believe. Okay, so here is why prophecy is superior to tongues. Mm -hmm. Prophecy is superior to tongues because prophecy in the church setting ministers to the church. And tongues don't necessarily minister to the church without an interpreter. They edify the individual and they're assigned to people that don't believe. All right. What verse is that? Uh, 22. All right. Read 23. If therefore the whole church be become together. If the whole church get together. To into one place. In one place, like and all we do. Speak with tongues. Like we do, well, we almost do it. It's at the whole church. I'm still trying to get the whole church here at one time. But if the whole church come together like we're supposed to do on Sunday morning. And all speak in tongues. And with everybody tongues, in the church starts speaking in tongues. And there come in those that And then are we unlearned. have a visitor come in that don't know nothing about church. Or unbelievers. Uh, unbelievers. Will they not say that ye are mad? They'll say this church is crazy. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just kind of modernizing. Mm -hmm. Okay. If they come in, they never heard anybody speak in tongue, and they come in and everybody's speaking in tongue, mm -hmm. they say, oh, oh, no, I ain't going to that church. That church over there crazy. Mm -hmm. Can I say something to you? They always thought the Pentecostal church was crazy. Mm -hmm. They still do. We had people who would come on Sunday night, look in the windows to watch us dance. Have mercy. Because Sunday night we was going to dance. Amen, somebody. Amen. But he's talking about in terms of understanding. If they come in and everybody's speaking in tongue, they won't be able to understand what's going on. Read. But if all prophesy. But if all prophesy. And there come in one that believes not. And there comes one that doesn't believe and not say. Or one unlearned. Or one unlearned. He is convinced of all. He's convinced of all. He is judged He's judged. All. He's con he, in other words, he will be convicted because God will be in a medium that he can understand. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, I'm going to finish right there and uh, say some other things about prophecy the next time. But um, when you prophesy, you don't have to say ye, thee, and thou. No. Amen. It's written in that English, but that's, that's not the Bible language. That doesn't prove that you anointed and thou. No, no. You. All right, you want to say it plainly. So that people understand. Amen. All right. Clap your hands right there. That's what I'm going to finish. All right. Any questions on anything I covered this evening? All right. We want the, we want the congregation to get the most good out of the gifts. Amen. Amen. All right. I want you to prepare yourselves to give this evening. If you're here in the sanctuary, um, going to use cash or check you need an envelope and if you're going to use your debit card or your credit card they have the card slider available for you this evening those of you that are watching by stream there are two ways that you can give and be a contributor this evening 
Uh, we have two applications that we use. We use the application GiveLify, and we can be found as the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then the second application we use is Cash App. And our hashtag address is dollar sign, Abundant Love Church. And so give and be generous this evening, and certainly the Lord will bless and return what you give to you. All right, everybody just about ready to give. All right, whatever you have, hold it up. And let's pray over this. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Because it is. It's an opportunity. It is one of those occasions where you have given to us so that we can give back to the Lord. Help us, Lord, to continue the cycle that as we give to you, you give back to us. You give seed to the sower. You give seed to the people that will sow the seed that you give. And so as we give back a portion to you, just fulfill your word, return it to us, good measure, press down, shaken together and running over, let men give into our bosom. Bless these that are in the sanctuary and these that are watching by stream in Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen and amen. All right. Any announcements this evening? Yes. Amen. Okay. Uh, she said that the Zoom, the Zoom uh, prayer will be nightly at 7 except Thursday. They are trying to accommodate the music department. On Thursday evening, it will be an 8 o'clock Zoom prayer. Amen. I had some people said to me, I'm not familiar with Zoom. And I said, well, it's a, free, it's a free app that allows us to have a conference by video. Amen? All right. Where, where, are, they posting, where are they posting the access information? By text? Okay, text and email. All right. Um, I, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will post it on our website for those of you all. For those of you all that are not um, members of our text list or text group, and those of you all that don't have access through email, um, we will post uh, the Zoom contact information on our website, which is abundantlove-church.org. That's abundantlove-church.org. And so if you would like to pray with us on Tuesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday evenings, we certainly welcome you to have prayer with us. Amen? Amen. All right. Everybody have a chance to give? All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, may we all stand at this time to be dismissed. Shall we pray? Father, uh, we thank you for the word tonight, and we thank you for the instruction that comes through your word. Help us, Father, to take this word into the good ground of our heart. Let it bear fruit, much fruit, and let the fruit remain. We pray, God, not only for these that are here in the sanctuary, but we pray for those that are watching by stream. We pray uh, that the word that was delivered this evening would cause growth to their edification and the building up of their faith. Now, Father, as we prepare to leave this place and go several different directions, you are the only God that is able to go with each of us, watch between us, until we are able to come together again. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. And amen. Shake hand with your neighbor and say, God bless you.